Welcome back, folks. I'm Frizz, and today we're going to be enjoying the great pastime of wild speculation. One of the best things about being a Pathfinder fan is that Paizo puts out a stupid amount of content every year, which means that there's always going to be something to look forward to. Just like right now, as I'm recording this video, in the main Pathfinder book line, we have both Book of the Dead and Dark Archive coming out in 2022, and both of them are going to be a ton of fun. Book of the Dead will have tons of rules for playing the undead, including, you know, undead player characters or archetypes are all about destroying undead, or controlling undead, or, you know, just stat blocks for different types of interesting undead. We have less information on the Dark Archive, but we do know that it will have the Psychic and Thaumaturge classes, in addition to a bunch more information on really horrific and creepy stuff. In this video, I'm going to be putting my wild speculation out there on what will be up next in the Paizo content line. Something to keep in mind is that Paizo has said that they're done with core books for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. This means that there won't be any books that are super, super general, and there'll be more deep dives on specific concepts and part of the Pathfinder experience. Basically, you have no need to buy the Book of the Dead to get a lot out of Pathfinder. But if you're thinking of running a campaign with a bunch of undead in it, then it's a really valuable book to own. Without further ado, let's just jump into my idea for future Pathfinder books and supplements. My first idea for a book and my wish is to get, essentially, the second edition version of the Planner Adventures book from first edition Pathfinder. That book had a ton of different options for building characters that have been influenced by different planes, or for rules on how you can explore other planes of existence and really spice them up and make them feel unique. And now in 2e, we're missing a bunch of those cool options for characters or rules for exploring outer planes. I've personally always found planar travel really fascinating in TTRPGs, so getting a breakdown of different planes or rules for planar effects or locations to use for different planes would be really, really cool. Also, I have some ideas for character options in particular that would be pretty nice in my opinion. The first player option that I want to talk about is probably one that almost everyone who knew Pathfinder 1e saw coming, which is that I actually want the Kineticist in a book on planar adventures. For those of you who don't know, the Kineticist was a super flexible and pretty fun class from 1e that was essentially a combination of Avatar The Last Airbender with Dragon Ball Z. Kineticists had the ability to control elemental energy, to fire off blasts, and manipulate the area around them, and they were absolutely one of my favorite classes in 1e. And they were basically martial characters with some very, very limited utility casting that used elemental magic to, you know, do their whole thing. They also had a fun ability to deal a bunch of non-lethal damage to themselves for power. I have multiple reasons for wanting the Kineticist in 2e, and I'm just going to go over them fairly quickly and not hugely in-depth because, yeah, there's only so much that I feel I can talk about this. First off is, yeah, I just think it would be fun. While you can build a lot of concepts that you would use for the Kineticist 4 already in 2nd edition, like if you want to make a Pyrokineticist, so someone that uses fire, you could just make a Flames Oracle, and that could work. There is a bit of the mechanical difference there, so it would just be fun, and I think that it would add a bit more depth to the system, and add a bunch of different types of characters that you could make technically currently, but it would fit better for a different class. My second reason is that mechanically I feel like the Kineticist, or at least something resembling the Kineticist, would fill a mechanical you know, void that is currently in 2nd edition. Kineticists would be a class that got the ability to create effectively magical weapons or use we magic to make weapon strikes, meaning that they would be martial characters who would use magic to attack using weapon proficiency rather than spell attack proficiency. This would mean that, you know, they get to use magic and do cool martial stuff, but they wouldn't be full spell casters, and that they wouldn't have access to a ton of different spells on different days and all that. So they would be very, very, very limited spell casters, and they would have some ability, but not much at all. They would be predominantly martials just using magic, and only magic, to do martial things, and that would be what separates them from a magus. Also, I want there mechanically to just be a class that has the ability to 
inconvenience themselves for the rest of the day in exchange for power. This was really well done in my opinion in 1st edition, and is something that I personally feel is missing from 2nd edition. Yes, you can get something similar with the oracle, but oracles can always refocus, which, you know, brings their curse down to the minimum level. I went to class that basically has a more extreme version of a curse that cannot be turned down. I just think that would be a really interesting kind of idea and line to have to balance while you're playing the character and would definitely make them mechanically unique. The final idea that I have for the Kinesist and why I think that they justify coming into 2e as their own class is that in 1e, Kinesis flavor kind of sucked. The only thing that was said is that you can manipulate elemental energy and there might be some sort of connection to the elemental planes, but it was never said that that was it. It never explained how you even got your kinesis powers in the first place, whether it's something that you trained to get, or if it's something you're born with. I want there to be an explanation on how your powers are connected to a different outer plane. If you're a pyrokineticist, you have a gate to the plane of fire in your body somewhere and you channel your abilities by taking out power from that gate and then shooting it out of your hands or wherever. If you're a telekinetist, you do that from the ethereal plane, and etc etc different kineticists get powers from different types of planes. I feel like that would be a really fun idea for a character in a class and is exceptionally flavorful. Essentially, I just really want the kineticist, and while I feel like there is definitely room for another unique class to be added here that is brand new and was not in first edition, I'm not creative enough to come up with it, but I feel like it would be a good design space for an uncommon or rare class that is all about manipulating planar energies. Another idea for character options that could be included in a book on planar adventures would be a bunch of archetypes that would be based on different planes and outsiders. As an example, the Gloomblade f archetype for fighters in 1e was very, very cool and was based around creating weapons from your own shadow by using, you know, planar effects from the shadow plane to create the weapons. This was a very, very cool idea for a character that unfortunately, due to this being 1e, was restricted to a single class. 2e though doesn't have this limitation, meaning that if an archetype was put in that was based on the Gloomblade, or it was literally just called Gloomblade, then it would allow them to be able to manipulate things and just create weapons from their shadow and every class could get it. Presumably this archetype would require that you're trained in different types of weapons and be trained in religion, but it would help out and allow you to create weapons from your shadow, similarly to how the Soulforger can create their Soulforged armament. Now, I don't know if it would have the same actions or all that, because I am, as you know, not a game designer, but it would allow you to create weapons that you need for each situation that you get into. Now, that is pretty strong though, so you could restrict its limitation by saying that anytime that you critically hit with one of these weapons, it is destroyed, meaning that you have to spend actions to create a new one. This would add a bunch of interesting ways that this would actually impact your game plan, and I just think it would be a very cool idea for an archetype that could, with a bunch of different ways that you can improve it later on. It's something that I would love to see, and I really hope gets implemented at some point during 2e's lifespan. The second idea that I have for archetypes, outside of ones that deal with the fundamental laws of different planes, like how the Gloom Blade would deal with the Shadow Plane, is archetypes that are based around the outsiders within the planes. Just as an example, you could have an archetype that is based around emulating psychobombs. It would allow you to get some of their abilities, or to just emulate their fighting style and deal with undead in a different way. This, I feel, would be really fun, and give some avenues towards being able to emulate outsiders in a different way. The final thing that I would like to talk about for player options is that, of course, there would be backgrounds ancestries and heritages that would represent either coming from outer planes, being born there, or being native to them. I feel like those would be very interesting and would help add a bit more depth to the system and 
make different types of campaigns a lot easier to do because if there is an extra planar background then you can justify starting in an outer plane. The next book that I'm going to be talking about is far, far less defined theme-wise in my mind, but I feel like it is important to consider and might actually be more important to most campaigns. We have a lot of information on groups and organizations within the NRC region of Galarian, but there aren't many tools for PCs to help making their own groups or just structures and organizations. I would really, really like to see some kind of rule system put in place for this. Pathfinder 1e had rules for both kingdom building and for mass combat, and I'd love to see a second edition take on those concepts, or even an adventure path that is related to them. Having rules to pull from when a party says, and this is inevitable that a party will say this, why don't we go and build a castle on that hill, is a huge weight that can be taken off of the GM's shoulders, speaking from personal experience. Having rules for building structures and all of that would be a huge, huge benefit for a lot of GMs that like to do things by the book and don't like just making up stuff on the fly, and, you know, having guidelines for not making it completely broken. Also, having rules for mass combat would be amazing at helping make huge set pieces that the PCs can really interact with. It's basically tradition at this point, that every single time that the PCs try and help out with any kind of war effort, that they are going to be a strike team or just a small group of highly skilled individuals that go in the back line and do all the, you know, small task force stuff. But PCs hardly ever actually interact with large battlefields, and that's a kind of role that I think would be really interesting to have in a campaign. But as it is currently, there isn't really a way that they can impact the scale of a battle large scale. So I would just love to have rules for armies fighting, and I feel like it would be very, very fun to have in. While we're talking about mass combat and all that, I'm going to be slipping in a class here that I feel will be appropriate for this book and would also fill a void that is currently in place in Pathfinder 2e. I would love to see a tactician class. Imagine a whole class that is designed on the same principles as the martial archetype. So you are a martial character that uses your own abilities to improve your allies. This would basically be a martial class that steps fully into a supporting role. It wouldn't have any abilities that increase their own damage, but they would probably have abilities that allow them to increase other people's accuracy or give them more actions in exchange for your own. You could have, you know, frontline tacticians that have a bit more martial abilities, or you could have backline tacticians that focus more on recalling knowledge and providing information for your allies. It's a idea for a character that I would love to play, and I feel is not currently represented in the system at all, so I would like to see it implemented and further expanded on. It's something that I have full trust in the Paizo design team to be able to make something interesting and unique, and I would just love to see something implemented for more tactically minded players that want to help out their allies. In addition to all of those rules in a tactician class, I'm also going to just put it out here that I would love to see more information on the structure of religious institutions in Galarian. I've always been interested in seeing how the churches of the major deities structure their churches differently, since how the chaotic good Desna organizes her church has got to be different than how Abadar, who is basically the patron saint of pure law and order and just law, does it. It would be really interesting, and alongside this sort of information, Paizo could include guidelines on how to give more depth to a polytheistic society for GMs who want to homebrew worlds outside of Galarian. It's something that has always kind of gotten in my way of ever wanting to make a homebrew world, because coming up with religious organizations and systems is something that I feel like I don't have a lot of experience with, and I don't know how I would want to do it. So having some kind of guide on that would be pretty nice. But I'm not going to lie here. A big reason for why I want this in a core line and not in the Lost Omens line of books is because I feel it would be reasonable justification to include a version of the Inquisitor class. Whether or not it's actually called the Inquisitor or something like the Deliverer that is a bit more, you know, representative of every deity, because not every deity would really have Inquisitors that go and do Inquisitor things, but they would have followers of the faith 
that could go out and bend the principles of their deity a bit more to be able to further the, you know, ideas and actions of their faith that otherwise other, you know, classes like clerics and paladins might not be able to because it would be breaking anathemas. Having a character that still genuinely believes in and follows a deity while still having the ability to go a bit outside of the lines would be a very fun idea. I don't know if this would just be a cleric doctrine, or if it could be just, you know, an archetype that any class could take. But I would obviously prefer it to be a full class, but it would just be a character concept of someone who faithfully follows a deity but has more leeway to go outside of the normal tenets of the faith is something that I know that I've been wanting to play, but there just isn't really a way to do it currently in Pathfinder. Plus, a wisdom-based bounded spellcaster like a Magus would be a ton of fun to play, and I feel like there is design space there to make them into a unique class. Basically, I just want the Inquisitor. And I don't really care what form they take whenever we get them, but I just want that kind of character concept to be able to be made in Pathfinder 2e while still feeling unique from other types of clerics. Also, please give more cleric feats. I feel like the cleric is in a decent space currently, but they are genuinely suffering from not having a very many interesting class feats, so I feel like a lot of people's issues with the cleric class would be resolved by either adding more doctrines or just adding more class feats. The final book that I feel is almost necessary for Paizo to release is an NPC codex. For those of you who don't know, in Pathfinder 1e, Paizo released a book that was full of detailed stat blocks and details for NPCs of basically every single class at every single level. If you needed to run a wizard that was around 6th level, and you didn't prepare them ahead of time, you could just pull out the NPC codex and find a humanoid NPC of that level, and bam, you've got a wizard. It was an amazing tool for GMs who were surprised by their party, meaning every GM, and it was really great for just figuring out, I don't know what I need to do right now, but I know that I need a humanoid character real quick. Currently, Pathfinder 2e is in a great spot in terms of bestiaries, but if you're trying to find a humanoid, you're going to have a bit of a harder time. While there definitely are humanoids that are in the Game Mastery Guide, there's not a huge variety of them, and especially not at higher levels. I think the highest level humanoid NPC currently is level 14, and they are a unique character. So if you need to suddenly get an Archmage, you don't have any options really currently, so it's a bit problematic because if you get to high levels, then you start losing support of different humanoid characters. So I feel like an NPC codex would be incredibly useful and help game masters out a ton with preparation. I honestly don't have all that much else to say here, as I feel like it speaks for itself and value pretty well. I think that it'd sell well and would help out a ton of different GMs and make their life substantially easier. Overall, I think it's pretty clear that I have some opinions on what Paizo should be putting out next, and I don't feel like they're bad opinions. I feel like they are pretty understandable and are based on mostly logic. Yeah, there's definitely some personal opinion in there. I definitely do really want the Kineticist and the Inquisitor to be included back in 2e, but I don't care a huge amount on the form that they take. I just want the ability to have some mechanical impact for the choices that I make with my character. Yes, I can make an Inquisitor currently with a Ranger and just saying that they follow a deity but they don't get spellcasting from them and they go out and still follow all the anathema and tenets of the deity. But I want there to be a mechanical difference to the character for making that choice. It doesn't have to be anything huge, but I would like there to be an option for it. And that's really what the core of this video is, is that there are options that I currently feel are pretty common and that people would want to have that you simply cannot make currently in Pathfinder. And yeah, that's one of the big draws to Pathfinder for me, is that I want the ability to basically make any character that I come up with in my head. And while Tui is currently still amazing for that, there are you can make so many characters, I would still always like a bit more. I don't need anything huge, and these supplements don't have to be, you know, 400 pages long or anything. I just want 
a bit. And I just feel like that would be a lot of fun, and I feel like nothing that I've mentioned here would be out of place to be included in a Pathfinder book. Thanks for watching this exceptionally opinionated video from me. <laughs> this has been a kind of interesting one to make because it's the first video that I've made that is filled entirely with my own opinions and specul speculation, so if you agree with me, let me know. If you disagree with me, let me down, down below. It's something where I would love to see other people's opinions on this because this is absolutely something that is purely based off of my opinions, so I'd like to hear yours. I have no idea what's coming. and the Pathfinder or Paizo line, and I just want to see what it is. Speculating about stuff is going to be fun, and I'm not going to be making any claims that what I have said here is any way true. They're just my wishful thinkings. So yeah, I want to hear what yours are. Pathfinder is a ton of fun, and hearing other people's opinions on it is part of the reasons why I made this channel in the first place. So yeah, if you want to support the channel at all, then liking, commenting, and subscribing is honest to god the best way to support it. It is what tells YouTube that this is a good thing to recommend to other people. So yeah, until we see you next, live a wonderful life.